Right. It's Gene, retired in Mexico. And if you're new to the channel, we ask one question here, which is, do they write them and sing them like they used to? Now, a lot of people, young and old, both, think that uh, old music is better, but I'm not so sure. And today, we're going to do the year 2009. And if you hear some firecrackers, uh, even though it's raining, it's raining outside, they're shooting off firecrackers. You might hear a little bit of that, but it shouldn't shouldn't be too disturbing. And anyway, I started this series. Uh, I started listening to music from the year 2000 in September of 2022. So, yeah, so this has been a 14-month uh, project. Um, I'm now wrapping up the 2000s with 2009, and today we will do albums 30 through 21. So this is a countdown. We'll do three episodes. So let's get into it so the video is not too long. Uh, coming in at number 30, well, first of all, I want to talk just about a couple albums that are kind of brilliant. They're not on my list because I, I don't find them particularly uh, listenable for completely different reasons. But let me just mention them real quick because they're great uh, in their own way. One is a four CD box set of Woody Guthrie, his 1944 recordings called My Dusty Road. And they found some master discs, I think around 08, in uh, some lady's basement who was, uh, I think, married to the owner of the record label or something. And I listened to these. The sound is stellar. Just absolutely crisp, crystal clear recordings. But it's 54 folk songs from 1944 starting with this land is your land and going on through and i maybe because it's not my favorite uh genre but i just cannot listen to 54 songs in a row of woody guthrie but from a technical standpoint brilliant and the other album i wanted to bring up is the uh and I, i'm just going to say their name uh hopefully it won't <laughs> be a problem on here but it's a duo that I like quite a bit called The Fuck Buttons. And it's their album, Tarot Sport. This album is brilliant. I've listened to it a few times. It's just absolutely brilliant. But you know, when I'm through listening to it, I'm agitated. I'm not relaxed at all. I mean, it it winds me up. and So it's not on the list um, because it's 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 just a rare occurrence that I'm going to sit down and listen to this album, but I admire the hell out of it. So let's get to number 30. Number 30 is a band I saw in concert, and it was a great show. So I can't believe that they're only at number 30, but this is Monsters of Folk. They only did one album, and it's uh, self-titled. The band is Monsters of Folk, and this is the album is Monsters of Folk. It's Jim James from My Morning Jacket and Connor Oberst and Mike Mogus from Bright Eyes, M. Ward from his solo career and from She and Him, and then Will Johnson from a, a band. I looked it up, but I, I didn't recognize it. And yeah, this is this is some great stuff. Uh, it's It's got a lot of songs on it, I think like 15 songs or something and my favorites the opening track dear god which is a jim james composition and it's it's just great he and connor sing on it i, I love it and uh yeah the album's a little hit and miss um and and i think with these guys the um you know i prefer all of their bands that they came from bright eyes my morning jacket yeah, I prefer that over this, but this is still fun. And yeah, it was a great show. Number 29, St. Vincent, a.k.a. Annie Clark, or I should put it the other way around, Annie Clark, a.k.a. St. Vincent. And this is the album Actor, which I think is their sophomore album. I'm not sure. And uh, I would like, I would come to like her next album better. Uh, so as we go through the years, uh, look for more St. Vincent. But uh, my favorite song on here is Actor Out of Work. I think there's a tremendous amount of humor in that. It's really great. I wish the whole album were as good as that track. Uh, so, yeah, some songs work better for me than others. But this is 
pretty interesting indie rock. And uh, I think she's a good example of uh, indie rock. All right. I'll keep it short there. Um, and she plays a lot of instruments on there. Anyway, 28. There's a story behind this, how I came to hear about the horrors. So in 2009 and 2010, I was trying to re-career and I went, I went and got a nursing license and I didn't listen to a lot of music, which is why uh, trying to catch up with 09, this was much harder than the other years that I did 00 through 08 uh, because I was busy at school, but I was doing clinical at a hospital and this young guy, probably in his late, mid, late 20s, was in the hospital. I, I don't know why he didn't say. And I was a student, and we were talking and chatting. We got to talking about music, and he told me about the horrors. And I had not heard of them. Uh, so I checked him out on his uh, suggestion, and I've forgotten his name, but I've never forgotten him. This is Primary Colors. Very interesting, produced by Jeff Barrow of Portishead. Yeah. And, you know, they mix so many styles on here. Uh, psychedelic rock, gothic rock, uh, shoegaze. It's, it's got all these different styles. And one time I watched some video on YouTube of them in concert, and I really liked it. And I thought, you know, these, these guys might even be a better live band than a studio band. But Lots of great uh, songs on here. I didn't uh, write them down because I, I don't want to make the video too long. But yeah, check out the Horrors Primary Colors. Uh, colors spelled with a U because they're from the UK. Yeah, really good album. Um, sorry, I could only put it at 28. Number 27 is a live album. And I will mention that I do live albums. I do anthologies, best ofs. You probably figure that out from the Woody Guthrie uh, because that was 1944. But uh, 27, REM live at the Olympia. The Olympia is in Dublin, Ireland. And they basically just invited an audience to a multi-night rehearsal. And they do a lot of deep tracks on here. It's really awesome. Uh, the recording, there's something about the recording that I don't quite love. It's a little, what's the word? A little um, maybe trebly. So I'm, I'm not a big fan of the record, probably the recording. I don't think it's the mix. But the song selection on here is great. And then as they go through the encores, I got to tell you this uh drummer bill reeflin who replaced bill barry you know everybody was thinking like oh rem's rem's done after bill barry but on the encores boy does he kick out the jams he just drums so hard and the band's in great form and michael stipe is just loose and self-deprecating and it's a double cd so it's a long listen but they also do a, they do a lot of uh unreleased songs uh some from accelerate some from other periods and they do a lot of early material and they just skip albums like green and out of time they don't do anything from those albums so i just i love the set list on here this album got pretty good reviews because it was unexpected and different coming in at number 26 uh someone who seems to always make my lists in the 2000s and always in this 20 to 30 range but it's roseanne cash the list so why is it called the list well when she was 18 years old her father and if you don't know her father is was uh, johnny cash he gave her a list of 100 songs that he thought were great country western and americana songs and he wanted to educate her so she had the list uh, i don't know how much she paid attention to it but after he uh died she put out this album i'm pretty sure this was after he passed away uh if not it was right at the end of his life and she chose um a dozen tracks i think it is songs like um i'm moving on and these are classic country western songs the long black veil lots of uh really good stuff on here and uh yeah it's you know it's it's pretty much straight ahead her husband john leventhal uh produced it 
shots. Now, he's pretty much a straight shooter. So there's no bells and whistles on here. It's just straight ahead country and her voice. But it's, it's nice to hear her do a covers album. Oh, and by the way, she has a lot of guest artists on here. And they they don't overshadow the album. So like the duet with Bruce Springsteen, he, he sings a little down um, in energy uh, to, to try to match her energy level. And it's a great duet. Elvis Costello is on here. Rufus Wainwright is on here. And who's the other one? There were four. I've just forgotten, but there's four guest artists on here that duet with her. So it's great. Uh, on the last album, she did a duet with uh, Steve Earle. And I think this set of singers is better for her. I love Steve Earle, but they didn't sing quite uh, as beautifully together as say she and uh, Bruce Springsteen do. Yeah, it's surprising. You don't think of Springsteen as a harmony vocalist, uh, but he he does a great job on the album. Okay, coming in number twenty five, we're <laughs> we're really switching gears here. We're going from country and western to dubstep. Yeah, five. The new number five colon five years of hyperdub, which is a record label. Now, this is a two CD uh, compilation, all dubstep bands like Burial, Flying Lotus, The Bug. I say bands, but obviously Burial, Burial's a guy and The Bug's a guy. So this is, a, this is really good. It's a nice variety and it's good late night listening. I've listened to the album a few times and late at night, it always just hits the spot. So it's kind of hard to put it on here because the time of day seem yeah, normally time of day is not that important but yeah night that that's when you should listen to this album in my opinion it's just it's just a just great and so anyway it's you know it's dubstep so not much else to say about it you guys know what that sounds like you know what burial sounds like so let's move on to the next one now number 24 all right, this gonna this might have upset some people. It shouldn't. I mean, nobody should take it personally because this is the number one album on a, on a lot of people's lists, number one or number two of the year. And I do like the album, but it's just it, it's just a little busy for my ears. Uh, there's some tracks I like better than others. It's Animal Collective, Meriwether Post Pavilion, my favorite of the albums I've listened to by them. I haven't listened to every Animal Collective album. Uh, somebody just wrote me on my channel, said I watched my old uh, reaction. I've done one reaction to to the to the group, and uh, they, they, they suggested I do some more. I might do that at, at some point. But, but Noah and Avery on here, um, Panda Bear, Avery Tear, just great stuff. I love the Brian Wilson influence. Just love it. Uh, my favorite songs are Girls and especially Summertime Clothes. Those are my two favorite tracks. And I think if every song on here was as good as those two songs, in my opinion, I would like the album even more. But still, it's at 24. I mean, it's one of my favorite albums. Uh, so, you know, this one just got such rave reviews, um, 9.6 on Pitchfork. And I love the album, but I, but I apparently don't love it as much as others, but it's still here. So, yeah, all these layered vocals and synths, it's pretty cool. Maybe it's a little bit like, you know, the Fuck Buttons tarot sport in that it's just an album that, uh, yeah, I prefer a little bit of space and, and room in the music it's just a personal preference but i admire the hell out of this album and i and i, and I do like it now number 23 is another album uh that's dense and complicated but when i put headphones on and listened to the whole album with headphones and read the lyrics it clicked and this is the flaming lips embryonic I'm a huge Flaming Lips fan, and I had never listened to this album because, again, I was busy in 09 and, and 10 and didn't listen to a lot of uh, new music. Uh, this is a double album, and it's a little bit of work to listen to, but pays off. And I've listened to it several times, and it 
it finally just clicked in my head. And now I really like the album. Uh, I might have a slight preference for some of the less weird uh, Flaming Lips. You know, I've talked about the, you know, I, the Soft Bulletin's probably my favorite album. And then I like Yoshimi Battles, the Pink Robots, and love those albums. So maybe uh, the fact that this is so strange and weird and dense. But I love the themes on the album. There's a lot of uh, social commentary on here. It's really cool, and the the singers sound good. It's um, not as much of um, I just spaced out the lead singer's name. Come on, I know it. I just thought of it yesterday when I was going through this. Anyway, sorry for the lapse there, but uh, Coin Wayne Coin. Um, he's not the only singer on here. He shares a lot of vocal duties. So I don't know the other fellow's name, but he sings really well on this album too. So really good. Number 22, someone who hadn't toured in 15 years and had to tour because he was ripped off. This is Leonard Cohen. He went and became a monk for five years in California, pretty much went to a meditation center. In the meantime, his, uh, manager ripped him off he came back and found out he had i don't know i think it was like sixty thousand dollars or something in his account which is not much uh, his manager by the way was a, a woman not that that's important but when we think about <laughs> you know but anyway it's just she just cleaned his clock he tried to get the money back and couldn't get it all back so he went on tour on this big world tour and it's a double album again, and it's very good. And it's it's interesting because it's his older voice singing a lot of his older material. So you got the older voice is the new voice, right? And then he sings a lot of his classics. And yeah, there's a lot of humor, and he's, he's very polite to the audience. And they just love him. This is uh, was recorded in London at the O2 Arena. After 15 year hiatus, and they welcomed him, and they just laugh and cheer, and it's a beautiful recording, and it's kind of like a greatest hits, except done live. So it's really cool. All right, the last one on here, another person from England that I just discovered this year. So in going, I, this one I discovered as a part of this exercise, and it's uh, a jazz artist from. Uh, based in Manchester, UK, the trumpet player Matthew Halsall, H-A-L-S-A-L-L. The album is Color Yes. And again, just like the Horrors album, the word color is spelled with a U. And this is just spiritual jazz. I, I read on um, Wikipedia he's got some trip-hop influence, but I don't know that I heard it that much on this album. But it's kind of interesting because he... Uh, he started his own record label, and he was the first artist on his own record label. Not the first time that's ever happened, but this is self-released on his own album, uh, on his own label. And uh, it's wonderful. It's just um, a, a few, I don't know, there's like seven tracks or something on this album. I forget exactly, but they're, you know, six, eight-minute songs, some of them, and it's wonderful. He plays trumpet, and it's not... It's not a hard bop album, but it's not smooth jazz either. It just falls into this uh, sort of nether space there that's really nice. And again, another late night album, really great to listen to in the evening. So that's it. I'm trying to keep the video a little shorter. And I appreciate your uh, listening in if you're still here. These don't get a lot of views, but they're very important to me. Let me know what you think. And... That's it. If you like what we're doing, do hit that like or subscribe button. And as we say here in Bonita, Mexico, Mexico, buen dia.